recording. Check, check. Gino, check, check. Yeah, check, eh? All right, that looks good. All right, Gino, welcome back to the Chainsaw Bar. It's been a damn hot minute. We've been not on air with you for over a month and a half, probably. What you been into? And I must have been work. I hear you. Same. All right. Um, damn. Last time we talked to you, we talked about some goofy ass shit, like goofy ass horror movies, and um, yeah, it wasn't anything crazy. We talked about phobias, and apparently you thought that was insane. I still haven't seen it. So there you are. Yeah. Yeah. One of my one of my uh, phobias is uh, talking on a podcast. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny as shit. Because you're on a podcast right now. Because I get, because like, like I said, I get nervous and shit like that. And 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 uh, the thing of this, I got a pile of damn horror movies that I got damn watched, but. Here I am, by God, um, stuck on damn uh, watching TikTok or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, the internet it's is... It's just fucking stupid, but damn, it's like a... Um, it's, I don't know. Like, like I said, uh, it's a pastime. It's a damn... Yeah, it's a pastime. It's like... Yeah, you watch damn internet funny videos, and damn, they take up like You're, fucking. You can get on one damn uh, thing on damn TikTok. So you like fishing? Well, it's one fishing video after another. Yep, the guys and catching like, a. Yeah, I got this kick's ass. It's fun. I don't disagree. Like watching a fucking fishing video is a blast, and watching like somebody catch a fish. I, I was watching tuna videos and stuff like that, and I love tuna. I love tuna. Tasty. And then, um, th- then I got on uh, looking up tuna, and then I didn't know this was like a, a rarity. Hmm. Like bluefin tuna and stuff like that. And next thing you know, I, hell, I'm a scholar, but I got... For the damn days over about damn tuna fish. <laughs> no shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like you've I'm rev- like you- a fucking scholar. You went to college for it at that point. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. I'm like hell. I know everything about the marble and all. This. I'm like, dude. I don't know. I hell. I'm a hillbilly. Yeah. I don't know what the hell fucking marble is in the tuna. But, but now you the day's over with, by God, I did. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, now you look at your damn slice of tuna at the damn sushi restaurant, and you're like, huh, that's not quite as marbled as I'd like. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm the hell. Next thing you know, I got my pinky up to my face. <laughs> and like, mm. <laughs> that's not damn marbled enough for my fucking damn way goo tuna. That's what I was wanting to order. <laughs> Exactly. Oh my god. So All right. fucking stupid, man. It is, yeah, the internet definitely has captivated us I'm to a dumb level. Hated, dude, I tell you what, if I could have one damn good wish, well, no, if I, I'd have my family to cross. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, making wishes, don't even try, man. Like, yeah, making the wishes is a that, trap. That's a horror movie in itself. It's like, a total uh, trap. I, I, I forget what the hell that one horror movie was. People wishing shit like that, and then they came through. Nah, yeah, it wasn't a good idea. There's so many of those. Definitely the, 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 the premium one that you do with is got anything with a gin in it. Like, a gin, they're sneaky as shit. They're not malevolent. Most of them, but like, they will definitely take your word at its value and give you something that you didn't expect, and then they kind of sticker and laugh about it. That's how the gin work, and goddamn, they're sneaky bastards. But I don't think they're totally malevolent. There's definitely bad damn gin, but like, if you watch them, what we do in the shadows, the gin they're working with is just like, I'm just following the damn system. Give me the damn what your wish is. But if there's a way I can kind of turn it a little bit, they're going to do it. 
And ah, it's weird. Because, like, in the damn What We Do in Shadows damn thing, like, one of the main characters makes this wish, but at the end of the wish, he's talking to the other guy and then, like, says something. And then the djinn's like, is that your wish? And the guy's like, that was my wish, yeah. And he didn't realize he said the other thing. And the djinn threw that little bit in there, which was every time you have sex and you orgasm, you think of some other guy. And it was horrible because, like, the guy was like... That, that, that was on that uh, th- uh, th- uh, Thrillogy. Oh. What Thrillogy? I forget that. Damn it. Was it a Korean it's film? Kinda, it's it's kind of like Monkey Palm. Oh. There's a movie called Monkey Palm. Yeah. Yeah. And people wishes on that Monkey Palm and it ends up biting them in the ass. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that is. Yeah, even Creep Show, like modern Creep Show. Yeah, they got Monkey Pie episode. That's where Jordan Peele even like Jordan Peele's damn production company. It's called Monkey Paw uh, Production. Yeah, yeah, it was like that damn. Everybody wanted to be black and is trying to uh oh uh, oh uh, uh, find somebody that was black because it was popular. That's kind of like the monkey paw. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely trying to make a wish to try to be something cooler than you are. Yeah, the monkey paw is definitely a damn weird... Up, then it ends up damn fucking kicking you in the ass. Yeah, because... Yeah, monkey paw wishes damn bad luck because, like, that monkey was not happy to lose its fucking hand. Monkey doesn't have... Pa- a monkey wish. doesn't have paw. I'm gonna say a monkey has a hand. Like, you're taking a monkey's hand. I'm gonna say that. Fuck it. Monkey's hand is a monkey's hand. It's not a monkey's paw. A monkey's paw is bullshit. It's a monkey's hand. They figured out how to use shit, and that's a hand. And you're using a monkey's paw, monkey's damn fucking hand as a wish machine? Yeah. It's gonna be bad. That movie will trip you out. Monkey's paw. That will trip you the fuck out. I'll, I'll let you borrow it. Oh, yeah, definitely let me borrow that shit. Uh, but, yeah, you need to watch them, uh, creep show. Like, Oh, the new creep show season is real. Nah, actually, last creep show season, we're three creep creep show seasons in. Like, uh, fuck, sorry about the burps. But last season there was a damn creep show episode where they had a monkey paw, and it was great. But, but this is a movie. This is a straight up damn movie. There you go. Fair enough. Damn fine. Damn thing. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, definitely gonna have to check that shit out. Let me scribble that down. Uh, yeah. But yeah, monkey paws, man. You don't... Uh, they're a weird device. Weird device, monkey paws. Like, it's weird that they give you wishes. I don't get it. I don't... I don't know how, I don't know what damn belief system that taking a monkey's hand would give you wishes somehow if you break the fingers. That's kind of like uh, the Appalachian thing of the rabbit, uh, the rabbit, um, uh, the rabbit tall. Okay, keep going. Rabbit That's tall? Like, oh, everybody carrying a, a on her keychain back in the day with the with the rabbit paw. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was a good luck. Like, all right, all right. So we killed this rabbit to get a uh, good luck. Yeah, good luck with that. But I hate to tell you, uh, rabbits ain't good luck, dude. Rabbits are ah. Uh... I can't remember how rabbit tastes. I remember, like, back in the day, like, my... Oh, my, God, I've killed so many of them damn things, dude. They're... It tastes like a squirrel. Ah, uh, squirrel. Yeah, fair enough. How's that compared to possum? Is it... Compare, how's it compared to possum? Because I've had possum. I've never, read, I've never read a possum. I've eaten groundhog. I've eaten groundhog, coon, uh, bear, deer... Uh, but never eat 
no possum. Well, now my grandfather, he did back in the day when there was no such thing as uh, when they killed all the coons out. What? What? Wait, well, when did they kill all the fucking raccoons out? When the hell did that happen? When they was hunting them all the damn time by a dog. God damn, we, the poor people were fucking starving then, that sucks. Yeah, that's, that's like straight starving level, that you're having to hunt an entire species out just to survive. Damn, what the fuck was the damn government, damn, the South doing then, that we hunted all the damn fucking coons out? That's fucking insane. Oh, you couldn't find no damn you couldn't find no coons back in the day. I talked to one fella, but I got his an old fella. He said, they, no, nah, they, they was possum hunting. Damn. Oh, you, hell yeah. Kill the coon, happy day. Kill the possum, that's another day. No, Damn. that was a great day. Cause, um, but I ain't never eaten one. I always want to try one, but thing of this I, why? I don't know. Like... So, here's my story about that. I'm like, good. I'm good. I, I... Alright, let me tell my story then, eh? Alright. Alright, so like, when I was going to them, the fine arts, them, uh, program here at SCC, which was the opening, the original beginning of it, like, my damn director, the director of the entire program was this damn Indian lady. And she was cool as shit. Loved her. She's awesome. But, like, one day I'm sitting there damn, just damn typing and writing shit on my damn notepad, looking at my computer, and she's in the back room, like, we have an open, we have a damn classroom, and then behind it is the kitchen, the microwave, fucking whatever room. A little tiny mini kitchenette. But, like, I hear a microwave going off, and I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm just like, she's microwaving her lunch. I'm just in there finishing my damn thesis on bullshit. And then she comes out, sets this tray down. And then she goes somewhere else to get some sides and shit. I'm like, what the hell? So I'm sitting there writing my shit. And then I turn around and look back behind me. And uh, on the desk behind me, there's this skull with damn meat and shit falling off it. I'm like, what the fuck is that? There's this animal skull on a plate that she just microwaved. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I'm just like, I turn around and see it. It's like, holy shit, you got a fucking animal skull on a plate and a bunch of shit around it. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And like, she comes back in the room and was like, yo, what the hell is that? And she's like, that's my lunch. What are you talking about? What are you up to? I'm like, what the fuck I is that? that. It's like, that. that's coon. Like, we got coon. We cooked it. And I just reheated it. And I'm like looking at this plate with a, a fucking raccoon skull, a bunch of veg around it. And she's like, yeah, that's my damn lunch. And she's re-microwaved a fucking coon skull fucking pile of meat and veg. And that's her lunch. I'm like, what in the fuck? That's a fucking skull of an animal. And I can see we can pluck some meat off it and eat it. But I'm like, what the shit? And she's like... Hey, like I said, it's really good. It's the, the thing of this is... Uh, uh, when we'd kill squirrels and stuff like that. the de Or groundhogs and stuff like that. The ducks was uh now my sister and my mama didn't eat, eat this but when it comes to the brains and stuff like that of a squirrel or a, or or a groundhog it's a delicacy i don't disagree that's what she said she's like you want to try a bite i'm like yeah okay i'm down whatever that's crazy looking but yeah i'll, I'll try a bite but then she said but you ain't touching that brain. All that brain's mine. That's the damn, that's the best part. And you can't have none of that. And I was like, really? And then my mind immediately popped to damn Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I'm like, 
damn, chilled monkey brains. It's like, is it that good? That that is the delicacy. That that brain part is the best part of the damn animal. And that's I, that's all I, I thought. I, I I think it's uh, basically uh, when I was growing up, it was just funny, you know that that you could. Uh, Eight groundhog brains and uh, and uh, squirrel brains. I just thought it was like I, I just it was like yeah hell yeah let's, hell yeah let's do this. Pan fry that shit up. Put it in some butter and pan fry it. It's probably damn amazing actually. Now we boiled it. Oh, uh, you boiled it? Hmm. Okay. That seems like a damn. I don't know. That seems like it would take away the flavor to me. Like. Like, when I want to cook something, I want to pan fry it in butter or olive oil, and then it wouldn't lose much of its original flavor. But boiling it seems like it'd take away a lot of the flavor. I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's one of them things like, oh, uh, you catch a trout, and you just, you don't take the head off of it. You just throw the fucking thing in there and fry it. Exactly, yeah. Because that face meat is delicious. Like, that face meat is fucking divine. Like, trout face meat, people? Delicious. Yeah. Like, you, you eat the whole fucking fish. I don't, I don't think you can get to the trout brain because there isn't much air. But the face meat and the damn skin around the face and the fucking head is actually really delicious. And I'm going to stand by that, man. Like, pan frying a damn trout... You get the face fucking them, the head meat, boom, it's good. i tell you what, I, I, trout ain't the best, uh, but damn, you you don't have to, you don't have to scale it, you don't got to do nothing to it, you just got to gut it, fry it. Yep. Yeah, that's 100%. That's why, that's why it's like the most best fish. Yeah, I agree 100%, like. Yeah, you just have to damn gut it and then pan fry it. There, there you go. Cover in salt and pepper, maybe, if you want to eat the skin. Throw a lemon in the middle of it if you want to bake it. Like, trout, damn, it sucks to be a trout because they are delicious. Trout are so delicious. Yeah, I like. All right, let's, um... Wrangle back in reality, Gino. Um, right, well, let's go back to the Monster Podcast. Hell yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, check this out. Hell yeah. Bum, 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 bum. It's, it's my favorite. Uh, and I like Vincent Price. Love Vincent Price. My love Vincent Price is epic. So, yeah. Yeah. So what do you got about I, Vincent? I bought a I bought a box set. Ooh. It's a Twice Cold Tales Madhouse Theater of Blood. Who? Where the hell did you get that shit? Where'd you pick uh, Damn, where the hell did I get this? What the hell do they call that? Barnes and Nobles. But hell, Barnes and Nobles don't sell shit no more. They sell a lot of books, but like they they do have a good damn movie section. And they also have a very good damn uh, record selection now because the records came back big time here in the last two years. Like record v- them vinyl has come back big time, and like Walmart even jumped on the we damn. Was, me and you was the last people by God do the. Uh, the Really listen to vinyl. I mean, come on, man. I know my fucking forty fives, all my ska records. Fuck. Damn it, man. I mean, I had the Doors. I had uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. Yep, yep. I had all that shit, man. I had damn uh, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I had the damn Michael Jackson in the fucking 45. I had damn fucking Creedence Clear, Clearwater's fucking Bad Times and all that shit. Damn. Yeah. Love 45. Uh, I love vinyl. Freaking, freaking Bob 
Dylan had all the. Can't hate that. If I if I could have my my collection back, it would be expensive to shit. Probably not, but you probably get your collection back for fucking two hundred bucks, no problem. I'm just saying, but you'd have to have a damn a damn nice record player and a stereo to hear it right, and a good set of headphones to damn listen to it proper. But yeah, I had, oh my god, and this is the damn crazy part. I had them uh, the Beatles. Beatles. Ugh. Ew. Ew. I don't like Beatles. I'm not Beatles, but... You gotta be shit, man. I'm not... You don't a... like the Beatles? Fuck the Beatles, man. I'm not a Beatles fan. Sorry. Nope. Not oh, sorry. Oh, Fuck oh, the Beatles. Oh, for you, man. Yeah, it does. Apparently, Fuck the Beatles. Not a Beatles fan. Sorry, uh, Radio Land, but... Yeah, fuck the Beatles, man. Ugh. Ick. 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 I was a big fan of the Beatles. And there you go. Maddie's Maddie's a okay fan of the Beatles. She she loves George Harrison's like work. Like Maddie loves George Harrison's work. But I, I was, now let's name the Beatles now. Like the only Beatle that I know that gets a oh, total one uh but let me say the only Beatle that I know that gets a Hundo pass from me. That, John Lennon. Fuck him. Nope. So, wrong guess, ma'am. Like, the only Beatle I know that I'm okay with being fucking in my fucking wheelhouse of people that I, like, would watch is old Ringo. And the only God, reason... God, he's the worst one. Eh, fuck off. The only reason I'm Ringo kidding. gets... I'm just kidding. There was no bad Beatle. Fair enough. Yeah, I like I've heard Jared. I've ho- I've heard George Harrison's work and it's okay. Like Paul McCarthy can suck a fucking dead dog dick. I don't give a fuck about Paul McCartney and um George Harrison. Yeah, George Harrison's okay. But like my Beatle, if I had to have the choice of Beatles that I'm not fucking shooting the face with a gun personally is Ringo. Ringo's the only one that gets a pass by me. Ringo is cool in my book. Ringo Star. You know what? If it came down to like fucking four bullets and five beetles, you're living. Cause like Ringo, nah, Ringo's all right. That's pretty. That's not my choice, but mine's John Lennon. But mm, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Everybody has their own choice, and I can't judge it. Artistic is artistic. Everybody likes who they like, but like generally the Beatles sucked. Like their bass music, fuck off! It's just too poppy garbage, and it pisses me off when I hear it. And it's like, everybody's happy or be happy or fuck you. It, I don't know. I, I don't like the Beatles. Dark music. They have some damn evil music. Ah, maybe. But now the Beatles. Hey, Helter Skelter, dude. Fair enough. Maybe I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Maybe. But generally, the Beatles suck shit. Ugh. Not a fan. Never have heard... Right, well, I'm going to I'm, I'm say this. Here we go. What was your favorite band? Now, since this is a horror podcast, it has to be a dark band. Oh, that's easy as shit, Gino. My favorite dark band? My favorite band in general... Is a band out of Seattle. And they are called the Murder City Devils. Oh, God. That sounds fucking horrible. I ain't never heard of them motherfuckers. They're pure rock and roll. Pure fucking... Fucking just fucking go to the throat fucking shit. But, like, the sounds weird. But, like, if you read the lyrics, it's dark as shit. And that band has been with me since, like, 1990 fucking three. Hey, yeah. So like I I seen them in Asheville actually. They came to Asheville with a band called Nashville Pussy, and <laughs> it was awesome as fuck. In yeah, a, I can lie with that one, man. Yeah, they played in a place like some Irish name like Maggie Malone's or whatever. But it 
the the damn venue was right across from the Diana Wortham Theater there in Asheville. And it's changed names and whatever. But the thing about one of their shows, one of the first shows I seen them play there, they were still throwing damn lighter fluid on the damn fucking cymbals and then throwing fucking gat damn fire on the cymbals. So the cymbals would burst into flames and then like during a certain set, they'd fucking send a fireball from the cymbals onto the roof. Which wasn't great for some venues because then the roof would start on fire. But they damn generally fucking lit up the cymbals with damn fucking lighter fluid and the cymbals would be on fire. I seen them in damn Asheville. I seen them in fucking them Knoxville. No, 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 it wasn't Knoxville. I've seen them a few places, but I also seen them out in damn, Ca- damn Lawrence, Kansas. And they did that thing. And the roof was only probably like 10 feet. And like when damn fucking the bout, the damn roadie fucking covered the cymbals in damn lighter fluid and then lit it. And they, then the damn drummer hit the damn fucking cymbals. That ball of fire hit the roof and you could see the fucking fire roll across the roof. And you were like, oh shit. Like, is that actually going to catch on fire? Because if it catches on fire, we all have to evacuate the damn venue because this place is burning to the ground. I I, I really uh, I have I I can't say just one uh uh one. I have to say two. All right, go. Uh. I have to say, why zombie? 100% why zombie? And, uh, and Danzig. Even with his damn tiny stature. <laughs> well, hell, I'm tiny stature. Hell, I'm on like damn five, you're, seven. You're about five inches taller than he is. <laughs> <laughs> like a damn giant, man. <laughs> You're looking down on Glen O. That's hilarious. <laughs> but Glenn, by God, I tell you what, I can kick your ass. Glenn, I don't care how muscular you are. You're fucking five foot nothing. You're a fucking dwarf. I'm gonna bite your head and fucking punch you. I, my knees are fucking at your face, so fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. I plus commodes with my legs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. I mean, but dude, look at him by God like uh the look at him a uh, picture of him, you'd think some bitch was like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> right? And he's only fucking five foot two. God damn. <laughs> I still wouldn't mess with that son of a bitch. That motherfucker kicked your ass. I honestly like if I came across him and his heist was that small, I'd be less impressed, actually. Like, he is so short. He is, like, so short. He's 5'3". Dude, dude, you're, like, 6 foot, by God. And I guarantee you could kick your ass. I Damn, if I fell on his ass, like, my fat ass fell on his ass, he'd be out. Like, well, I could just grab him on, and fall on if him. You, if you fell on him, you'd kill him. A hundred percent, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I'm not really afraid of Glenn Danzig. Like, the <laughs> fact that he's like a foot shorter than me, if I grabbed him and fell on him, my entire weight, my fat ass would kill his ass. That's the thing about it. Like, I could just lay on him and he would choke to death because I'm such a big fucking dude compared to him. So, it's kind of fucking sad and it's kind of fucking weird that... Like, well, I am but, so much bigger. If, if he wasn't singing about too much crazy shit and stuff like that, you wouldn't be saying that about, like, damn uh, Elvis or something. No, no. Yeah, Elvis. Oh, fuck. Elvis went to the military. So he, he made them, actually. Elvis <laughs> went through our fucking military fucking training system. That ain't no <laughs> joke. Like, I didn't, I, I, I didn't make the damn fucking... I didn't go through them basic tra- training... <laughs> Elvis actually went through basic training, so there's that level of respect there. 
Like, base training hasn't really changed in the last fucking hundred years. It's brutal as shit. It is meant to weed you out. And if you make it through basic training, you're ready for the fucking field. And Elvis went through basic training. So there is that factor. I'll give him that. That's about, that's about I'll give Elvis. I love Elvis. Elvis, I've been Graceland twice. Elvis is my heart. Love the fucking M. That greasy fucking twat. Love that man. His music is awesome. He married what he did. He did what he did. And you know what? Like, Graceland, his damn dream of his house was awesome. Love it. Been to Graceland. And he, he went through basic training. And you know what? He went to damn, he served damn the country. He ended up in Germany, but whatever. But he did his time in our U.S. military. And I didn't do that. I didn't go through basic training, so I can respect him way more than I can respect myself for that part of the world. And there you go. Because basic training is still basic training. The crazy part of it is he didn't even have to do it. He didn't have to. Yeah, he could have figured out a way to get out of damn going to the damn army. You're right. Yeah. But he went and joined our military and served his time. Bam. He's a badass, man. He's respectable. I'll give him that. Yeah. So Elvis, cheers to you, damn the king. You did your damn service to the U.S. damn fucking damn system. And you are a fucking American icon. And you deserve it. So, cheers to you there, Elvis. Cheers. Nice. But he was an FU. <laughs> Damn. But, yeah, there you go. Like, fuck. Elvis, man. He didn't know where he's going. He was... He was just like you and me. We don't know where, we don't know where we're going. Maybe our listeners don't wor- know where we're going, but like, he just accepted like, fuck, the government's calling me. It's time to serve my time with the government. I'm going to the service. I don't oh, know what, he didn't know what he's doing. Fucking Elvis, by God, bam. You can't be Elvis. No, he can't be Elvis because like, he went, he actually did join the military and did his time. So, like, that, if you look at all the other Rockabilly guys, did they go to the military? Nope. Did Elvis voluntarily join the military, serve our country, and then defend our country? Yep. But he was a fool. <laughs> right? Like, even Johnny Cash. Love Johnny Cash. He didn't join the I military. Johnny Cash, I tell you what, my God. Johnny Cash, they something about that. Um, something about I that like motherfucker. I was probably equally, maybe, but damn, if uh, Johnny Cash probably uh, Johnny he's, Cash, seems he's cooler. he's probably more he's more up there. Johnny Cash is more down to earth because he knew what he was. And he knew where he was going in his life. And, oh man, he was, like he was a downward I mean, spiral somewhere. I mean, I mean, the thing of it is, is that when I was a kid growing up, I, I can more relate to Johnny Cash, I guess, because I guess a lot of trains. Oh, yeah. Look at yonder coming, coming down that railroad track. Look at yonder coming. Come down that railroad track. It's the Orange Blossom Special. Bring in my baby back. <laughs> woo woo. Whoop. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Now, I was, I, I tell you what, now, Johnny Cash, I really like that because he's more like a, uh, every man, well, maybe? I say that he, he was more like a, a a folk singer. Yeah. He's more of a Dylan-ish kind of fucking... He, um, wasn't a, he wasn't a rock and roll guy. He was just a folk singer. He was just singing the 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 law of the land. Long-haired fucking Memphis fucking rockabilly. 
He was a he's a rockabilly. He was a good dude. Like when he came to Memphis, like when he came to Nashville, they were like, "Ah, you're one of those long-haired Memphis rockabillies." And he was just like, "Yeah, whatever." But yeah, he was what he was. He damn rock and he did damn rockabilly, but he also was damn he is a pure country artist. Like country in the fact that like poor fucking people's music. Like black white, he did poor people's music better than most people did. And that's what I gotta say about them Johnny the Cash. Is, I can't remember the damn names of the fucking songs or the albums or nothing like that, but uh, I just, uh, some of them I could remember, you know, just like the Orange Blossom special. Now, I didn't want to hear them damn old other songs. They, they, he had some sad songs that I can't even listen <laughs> Yeah. Like, that's the thing about them country music and, like, southern music, like, you're either praying to God and I'm being sad. Not, uh, there's some. There's some of his songs. I, I said I ain't listening to that shit. But I'm just saying, like, some of the music is just so fucking pure and sad and depressing. Yeah, it's hard to listen to because that was an aspect of them living that most people, like up north or out west or Midwest, didn't have to deal with. Because they were just getting by, and then us in the southeast here in the south, we weren't getting by. We were just fucking, we had to struggle, and we couldn't make it. And that sucks. squirrel brains and groundhog brains and shit like that. Yep, you had to eat what you had to eat. You had to kill what you had to kill to eat. And live. And, and you was looking at somebody, uh, uh, a cooking a uh, uh, a coon head. <laughs> Fair enough, yep. Said, so you ain't getting a brain. You can have some of the sun, me. <laughs> you have some of that face damn cheek me, but I'm eating part of that, most of that brain. Fuck you. <laughs> there you go. Not wrong. That's messed up. Well, I mean, ain't messed up until I just now thought about it. <laughs> Yeah, you're dissecting a fucking animal skull for edible bits. Yeah, then it's damn fucking messed up when you think about that. You're you're like, I want some of that fucking brain. I don't want any of them cheek meats. Fuck your cheek meats. I don't need your damn jaw meats. I want that brain bite. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want that leg. I want that brain. <laughs> Give me that brain. I don't want none of your damn rib meat. I don't want that damn skinny ass I'll rib meat. I don't want rib meat on no damn squirrel. Ugh. Or, or well, damn fucking raccoon. Or fucking possum. But like. Nah, there was none of that. It was just you quartered that bitch and that's the way you did it. There you go. But that is the way it is looking at right now with that we're talking about. Like, you don't want none of those damn weird bits. You want brains and you want fucking. The good bits. God damn, well, that, that's fucking that weird. That was the dancey part of it. Yep. But what was the damn? What part of that was the damn? The animal well, that's part. That's a horror podcast right there. Yeah, that's what we're in right now. You and me are right in the middle of this. What was the edible parts of a fucking possum? Because, like, those guys just, didn't seem like they the, were... Just the, just the legs. Legs and the... And the brain. there got to be some bits of rib there. There's got to be some ribs there there to let no, edible. There, like, there's nothing on them fucking ribs. <laughs> God damn, there you go, people. Like, ah, uh, you're going to roast a damn... If you're catching damn gun opossum... All you're getting is damn legs, brains, and then... That's it. That's about it, really. Damn. Fucking A. How is this... How is this what we're doing on the podcast? This has been the Chainsaw Bar, and we are oh, talking about delectable... Like it's, 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 Jesus. 
it's it's better than I mean it's a horror podcast that is horror that is horror survival yeah hundred percent like I got four damn raccoon drumsticks hell yeah <laughs> and there you go I got well, four possum was, drumsticks and this, and this was the fun part by God is that oh we uh we would uh. They'd give us the hides to play with and stuff like that. Just to see if we can't them. Uh, how do you say this? Uh, give us the hides to uh, cure out and stuff. All right. Yeah, you got them. You got them. Hide the tan, possibly. Yeah, yeah. Then we we hide we um we them uh, tan the hides and stuff like that, and then and I use them as rugs and stuff like that, and put them all, all around my room. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, because like like when my firstborn was born, like. I went back to my house in Big Cove and like like a damn fucking damn um god damn one of those rare ass damn river weasels like a fucking river weasel got ran over I don't know what it was it's a river weasel but it got hit and then like it hit me what? a mink yeah yeah a mink got hit and then, the, like, later that damn, like, the next day, I went back up there, went back home, because we were crashing in Asheville, because my boy was premature, and was in the ICU premature, and my wife was in ICU, and the boy was in ICU in a box. So, I was out, and... I had to run back to my house in Big Cove, which is about fucking an hour away from Asheville where the kids and my wife were, my kid and my wife were, but there was this mink ran over in the road, and I was like, that mink, huh, that's a rare skin, so I fucking stopped off, grabbed that mink, gutted it, skinned it. Threw it in some fucking damn salt and some, um, I don't know, some fucking Barbasol or whatever the fuck. <clears throat> some dehydrating fucking damn salt damn compound. And then fucking, sk- I damn skinned that shit. I pretty much like, when I went back to the house, I was like, alright, fuck it. Like, I grabbed that mink skin I deboned the entire thing, and then I threw fucking salt, and I just can't remember the chemical. Bar, it starts with a B. But either way, borax. Borax, yes. I covered it in borax and salt. I skinned out the damn thing, I skinned the animal, and took it down to the skin level. Covered it in borax and salt to eat the fat and whatever, and then just hung it out there. And damn borax and salt that skin, and that damn fucking pelt is actually upstairs right now. Like, if I need a damn a nice brown fucking damn fur for a fly, I have that damn fucking borax damn fucking pelt. To get them mink fur off of. Yeah, nice. Yeah, now I've used it a few times. Yeah, it floats really well. Like that damn mink skin, that mink fur is really good for fucking floating a fly. I didn't even know them fucking things was around here. I was down at work and I was down by the creek. And, uh, and here I seen this damn mink. I was like, what the fuck? I thought them sound bitches was fucking extinct around here. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, you're not wrong. Not wrong. 
because my papa, by God, he used to them uh, at the meat traps and stuff like that, and uh, and he'd skin them and stuff like that and sell the hides for mm-hmm. women scarves. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, I've got minks. I've got mink them fucking pelt up in my damn. My fly tying collection right now that I damn skinned out, damn borax, and them dried out. Yeah, if can't I need beat that, can't beat that. But them things are back. They're back. Yeah, they definitely will kill trout like a fucking motherfucker. Like those That's are people fucking wanted to kill around in the first place. Them and uh, you know, there's a number of them. Uh, uh, see otters, by God, them things, by God, they will fucking eat the shit out of some damn trout. Yep. Yeah, totally. Otters, trout, and them minks. Yeah, both those guys are fucking killer trout killers. And when they the- used to not be <clears throat> no beaver around here because they killed them all out back when they made hats out of them. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but now, my God, they're back full strong hell wouldn't have. Oh, man. Like, my friend, at, you know, like, one of our friends at work has got to deal with, like, one of those right now. Like, a friend, our friend Ed at work, you know, he's got oh, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 he's got a damn fucking damn beaver fucking up his property right now. Oh yeah, one hundred percent on that. He told me about this here. I seen the pictures. That beaver is a motherfucker. It's fucking shit up. It's a damn ripping up his trees, big time around his property. That little bastard can go fuck itself. It's fucking. It's a D-Gen. That D-Gen. I, I didn't know him. Some bitches could cut down a fucking tree by got the size of a uh, uh, fucking uh, beach ball. Yeah, they're fucking shit. They're fucking his shit up. Like his property is getting fucked up right now because of that little bastard. Holy fuck! Size of a fucking beach ball, dude. This damn beaver bugger was damn uh, chewing down uh, fucking trees. Size of a fucking beach ball, dude. That's huge. Yeah, that's a ridiculous. They're logger. They are fucking pure logger. Those little bastards. But and that's why I like them. I don't give a shit. My God, I ain't gonna fucking bother one. That's something I ain't never eat. I ain't never eat one of them. I heard the tail's good. That's all. That generally you only eat the tail. That's weird as shit to me. They got weird paddle tail, and that's what you eat. I don't, I can't even imagine that's good. It but, don't sound. It sounds like a meaty fucking gross well, thing. Think, well, think of this. Them things. Wasn't around when I was growing up. Yeah, they migrated south. That's what's happening. But whatever. You didn't hear. You did not hear uh, nothing about a damn beaver. You didn't hear about that. But also, now we're hearing about beavers, and now we're hearing about fucking the armadillos. And hey, and eagles, dude. I seen a fucking fucking. Bald eagle. Yeah, yeah. Like I've seen a bald eagle like five years ago. Like five years ago, bald eagle. It's like, oh fuck, there's I a bald seen, eagle. I seen one last week, dude. Like five years ago, I seen a bald eagle. So, damn. But like armadillos and fucking beavers. What the fuck? The fucking armadillo. There's one in the fucking yard, dude. Unbelievable. Those, that's what unbelievable. What the hell is this up with? I thought this was a cold fucking place, but God, them sons of bitches couldn't survive. Once we have a cold spell, they're dead, but damn. They're here now. Once we hit like an Arctic blast for fucking two weeks, those poor things are just going to die. But they're here now. They're here now. They're right here now, and I couldn't believe that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one one of my one of my friends at work, by God, and uh, he's not no fucking liar. 
Yep, armadillos, like man. Him. There the thing he is. is, by God, it was laying on the side of the road, dead, ran out. Yep, yep, I've seen those. It's crazy. Like, dead armadillo. Right there on 74. Boom. Dead armadillo. It's like, what the fuck? And I but was they, like, is that, but, a, was that but, an armadillo? But, 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 they has been one in the yard. Eating oh, grub shit. worms and shit. Yeah, they're damn... That's the thing about those little buddies. They eat damn grubs and shit. They eat grubs and damn worms and shit. And once the damn cold hits them, they ain't got nowhere to go. They just eat damn ground damn ground worms and shit. They ain't damn scavengers like a raccoon. They eat ground worms and shit. So once the damn cold hits, those poor buddies are just dead as fuck. What the damn thing of this? It's, it's, it's dropped down. Um, it's dropped down in the 20s here for um, basically about uh, every fucking night, by God, for two weeks. No. Like, I give you that. Yeah, it's been cold as shit for the last damn two weeks, but it's not been freeze, damn freeze off, damn kill for two weeks. It's been damn up and down, but like it's not. We haven't had a hard I about, freeze. I about freeze your fucking nuts off, shit. But we we haven't had a hard freeze that's been more than a couple days. Like once we have a hard freeze for fucking two weeks, that's when those little guys are gonna start dying off. But like we have a hard freeze for two or three days. Yeah, I there's that. They, I think they fucking adapt. <sighs> you you you're probably not wrong. Yeah, you're probably. I, I mean, dude, it's took these things like uh, I mean, they, they come from Mexico and yep. South America and shit. They just made their way up here, and they're just like, "Fuck it, man, I'm a possum now, boy." Yeah, there are they're a shy, they're a shelled possum, shelled possum. Hell yeah! I'm just a motherfucking possum now, but yep. Yeah, don't disagree. Can't disagree with that. You're right. I just, I just think they fucking evolved and uh, adapted. I don't think they can. I don't think if we get damn a two week hard frost, I think we'd lose a lot. Pretty much most of them. <laughs> but like once they feel the cold, they'll start running towards warmth, so they'll go south. So they're they're next like fucking Florida is fucked. Florida's is gonna be covered in possums, fucking anacondas, and fucking. Like, Burmese python, dude. Yeah, and the damn um, lizard. What's the lizard? The. What the hell was that thing called? It's a bait. It's not even a really interesting lizard. It's just like your household lizard. Like, um. It's not like a damn. It's not like what we got. We got a damn spiky fucking. We got a spiky lizard, and that's not that. It's like fucking some other lizard. But, yeah, Florida's gonna be fucking. Oh, oh. oh. It starts with a G. Maybe. Oh. oh. Anyway. Yeah. I, hey, it's a good thing that we don't know the fucking name of them. Yeah, fuck those things. But, yeah, like, they're definitely getting gargantuan lizards that are just chilling there. Iguana. That's it. That's it. It starts with an I, but sounds like a G. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Not iguana. That's like bat shit. What the fuck? <laughs> iguanas. Yeah. All the iguanas. Iguana. Yeah. Yep, yep. Iguana. Iguana. It sounds like the Iwana newspaper. I said, I said guano. Guano, like the bat? Psh. Yeah, I said, I was, I was like, yeah, it's guano. No yeah, guano. I'm, like, I'm a hillbilly, baby. Eh, it's, it's one of them guanos. <laughs> no guano, bro. No guano. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny shit right there. <laughs> I don't care. Here you go. Oh, jeez. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's um, let's wrap this shit up. It's like two and twenty three. Let's wrap this shit up. But um, goddamn, yeah, like crazy animals are invading our area just because it's getting warmer. 
and that's fucked up. Damn. I'm glad it's getting warmer. Yeah. Yeah. I like it warmer. I hate damn cold fucking snowy winters, man. Fuck that. Ugh. Well, you don't like... If, if you love cold fucking weather, go 3,500 feet, by God. You'll get all the snow you want to. I might have them take one of my boys up there because one of my boys love snow. And I think there's snow up there right now. Uh, I might have to take him up there and see him do some sledding because he loves damn snow and sledding. So, yeah, I might have to go up there on the damn top of that mountain and I'm take him sledding. So, yeah, something to do in the next damn two weeks because all y'all, my and Gino's and Maddie's and uh, Joe's and Leah's listening audience, we are at the winter equinox. So, from here on out, every day from here on out, y'all get one minute extra of sunshine. Woohoo! Love that. Yeah, I love that today, by God. Yeah, that's what you're getting, Gino. Today was the longest, darkest night of the year. Boom. Oh, good. Thank God. Hell I yeah. What, by God. I tell you what. I ain't no fan of no damn cold weather. Not a fan either. But yeah, today's the Equinox. Happy Equinox, my uh, listeners. You'll hear this probably, uh, probably there or something from now, but like two or three days previous to this being released was the Equinox, and now you all are listening to a podcast where... Y'all are enjoying an extra two or three minutes of extra sunshine every day. So, there you go. Because... Of, of real horror. Real horror. Hell yeah. But... Because if you're, listen, if you're listening to this podcast, this is horror. <laughs> Fuck yeah. But, uh... That's the whole damn point of doing it and stuff like that. We all have fun. If you listen to it, you're having fun eating it. There you go. There you go. Or are you folding your laundry or you're washing dishes? Whatever you're doing. We love you. Um, I'll, I'll get back to uh, <laughs> my, uh, my uh, horror movies and stuff like that. Like I said, uh, I got to get stuck off Vincent Price. Oh, uh, man. Love Vincent. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and stuff like that. Now, uh, look at some new material and stuff like that. See if you like it. But damn thing it is is that uh, uh, the newer movies that I've seen now in the, in the horror genre and stuff like that is I, I don't think they've got stuck out of the damn late night. That's a fair call. Yeah, that's a fair I'm call. It's like, what the fuck? The hell, I could come up with some better horror movies than this fucking shit. Yeah, like, I haven't seen anything really inventive at all here in the last damn no, five years. It's, it, is, it is not, dude. Some of it, it's fun. Some of it is fun as shit. I enjoy the fact that it's fun, but... It definitely is nostalgic themed. So they're had, definitely playing I've, I've back had, to I've, the old schemes. I've had I've had more fun watching uh uh thrilogies with just short films. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, your anthology, just, you love them. Just just uh just like uh uh, than a uh, horror film because I tell you what I have more fun with a short film than and I mean I ain't even saying uh, a short film I mean some some of them was like 30 damn minutes but uh, I gotta ex, ex, uh, uh, how do you say this uh, 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 
a thought expansion by God that just goes just to that. No, uh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, definitely. Like when you watch a film, it is way better if like you understand the damn theme of it. And then you just kind of fucking go with the theme, and then the director damn promotes that theme, and then you all fucking run a storyline. That sounds stupid, but dumb, but, but whatever. Have, but if you have John Carpenter or something like that, he could make a movie in a short period of time that I will. Uh, Cigarette burns. I mean, I mean, dude, these guys are. Freaking awesome as shit! Uh, they they can make a short film and uh, make an impact on you than if you're sitting through a damn movie for two fucking hours or an hour. That's fair. Yeah, you're not wrong. Hundred percent. I mean, one hundred percent on this, dude. People just can't make a fucking movie. That uh, you can sit through, and you think it's freaking awesome, and uh, they have to do this build up and all this shit and stuff like that. Uh, they've got the movie done by God in a thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, you're or, not wrong, or or less. They cut the fluff, so yeah, they definitely, like, a real director definitely can cut the fluff, cut them fat, the bullshit, and make yeah. a great fucking film in 30 minutes, which is I something mean, that will stick I, with you. The, the thing I did is, that's the reason I, it's hard to go through a damn horror movie and stuff like that, because, uh, uh, they, Gotta put in a. All right, well, we got a long ride through New Jersey. We got a. We got to pick up some snacks at the fucking store at this damn store. Gotta <laughs> grab some snacks. You gotta oh, always grab your snacks. Up, dude. And then, if you didn't check your back seat, there's some fucking psycho in the back seat. Uh, you done fucked up not checking your base. You didn't check your back seat. You did, damn, didn't check the damn fucking damn trunk. Some psycho crawled in. Yeah. Oh, don't don't forget don't forget the um uh, all right, we gotta um uh, we gotta stop here and um uh, oh my god, yeah. Yeah. It cuts out a lot of bullshit in a horror film. It's why I like <laughs> the, uh, the smaller films. Fair. There, it's like, all right, now we got to show some titties and, uh, all right. There's no need in all that when you go into a straight up horror film, you know? That's. That I will say, Gino, like you're not wrong. Like, fuck. I mean, hey, I, 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 like, hold on, Gene. Hold on. Hold on. Rare at that damn shit. He's like, all right. Oh, we gotta go get a candy bar at the fucking store. I'm like, okay. Getting murdered. The end. Yeah. Or the end of that character. But like, you're not wrong about what you're saying. But I will, fuck, I hate to, it's weird that I have to say this, but like, fucking House of a Thousand Corpses. That was the best. The way damn Rob Zombie re-envisioned the horror movie, and given oh, it, given it's, it's probably 30th anniversary, I will say, I think it's on its 30th oh, anniversary. No, 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 no. That was like, it's it's been there, Gene. It's a long time. That film has been there for fucking probably thirty years. I don't think it's been there forty years, but maybe twenty five to fucking twenty 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 five I, thirty say, years. Yeah, tw I'd say twenty five. Either way, it's on its anniversary, and that film actually 
definitely envisions like classic horror movies. You stop somewhere, you fuck with the damn locals, and that local just happens to be a complete fucking psycho killer. Yeah, you're but gonna he, get fucked. He, 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 he uh, actually made it really good because it was a horror. Uh, it wasn't just like a. It wasn't just like stopping at a gas station. It was like. Captain Spaulding's at a horror place. Yeah, but he wasn't totally the killer there. And that's the thing. Like, yeah, come to find out, he was in the family. He was in the family, yeah. But the family grabbed those kids and killed them all off. But he was selling damn delicious chicken, so whatever. It just tastes damn good. So damn good. Can't disagree there. Man, What's I... that damn, what was that <laughs> damn one? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, it's like... It, uh, the MTV guy that that he could be in that damn movie and pull that off, by God. That's pretty damn good. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Definitely. But, yeah. He like could pull that... He was, he was on damn, like, in MTV uh, something bullshit but <laughs> but he could pull that shit off fuck yeah but delicious chicken man that sells a lot of things like delicious chicken bam I don't care who you the fuck you are like that's how the colonel's been around so long like the colonel has a damn nice recipe and it's a damn delicious like, you get Broster's Chicken. If y'all in the South here can get Broster's Chicken, bam. Like, Broster's Chicken is awesome. KFC is awesome. Like, fucking Popeye's Chicken, yeah, it's okay. I've and, got the original. And, yeah. But, like, Southern people and their chicken damn flavorings, psh, that is fucking... Like, awesome, but, like, if you're trying to steal the recipe or trying to figure out the recipe or just happen to come across somebody that's selling the recipe, that's some horror movie shit. Like, if you got, them a specialty chicken shack and a bunch of damn fucking kids show up and they're like, yeah, we'll buy some of the chicken, but then they're talking shit about it. That's where shit goes wrong, and then you got a whole movie where, like, these damn teenagers are gonna get killed because they stopped at that weird chicken shack, and now they are fucking dissing the chicken shack, and the southern people are gonna kill the fuck out of you for fucking being rude. The end. That's how southern fucking southwest, southeast horror movies work. You disrespect our fucking chicken flavors, you fucked up, and we're going to say, fuck you, we're going to kill you because of it. The end. But In this is one damn thing, and I'm going to say this. we still on podcast, right? Still record? Yep, yep. Well, check this out. This is the one thing that uh, uh, House Thousands of Corpses that got, that nobody else got, is uh, you got to get the music right. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, I don't uh, disagree. I, and and he was a musician before he was a freaking uh, making horror films. And the thing of this, he already had it down pat. By God, it's Rob Zombie for God's sake. Yep. Yeah, he definitely had his music. He had his damn soundtrack in he his had, mind. He had he had the music down. The um. And that was 100% made that fucking move. Yeah, that story was really good. I will say that. The story was really good, but, like, yeah, the music was awesome. The way the Rob music. Zombie wrote the damn music in, yeah, 100% on point. But, like, Rob actually did a really good horror movie there. I'm going to give him 100% damn fucking critique. Like, House of a Thousand Corpses is, is a classic 70s slasher. In the fucking 90s, 2000s, wherever the hell it came out. But, but you know how we do the, the pizza reviews and stuff like that? Yeah. This is definitely a 10. 
I'll give it a damn nine. Oh my god, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm coming over to you. Yep, bring it, brother. But it's a nine. Like, 100%, like, he definitely had the soundtrack in his mind. He had the story. But then he had to damn bring the, the actors in. And then he had to write the story. And I'm pretty sure that's how it came down. He's like, I've got this damn movie in my head. And this is the songs I want to play. And I think this is the characters. This is the story. And like 100% damn Rob Zombie, House of Thousands Corpses is a Rob Zombie fucking masterpiece because he brought it all together. I don't give a shit. By God, it, 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 like I said, it is right there, number 10 by, uh, 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 the Texas Chainsaw Master. Right there. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Like, Toby Hooper is a great director. So good. So, how how good this is how good it is it's up there with uh uh bruce campbell i oh. don't give a shit what anybody says this is how awesome it is is i have got the clown on my table mm-hmm. with a sid Hagee's autograph on it and that sits at my table yeah you're lucky as shit that's an awesome piece of damn fucking that's an awesome piece of shit. I love that. I love the fact that's how fucking good that uh, how how good that movie was. Yeah, Sid Hagen was now, awesome. Now the rest of them, Devil's Rejects. Uh, I, eh, it was well, okay. I, I, it was I, okay. I, I, I'll, I'll give it a fucking seven. Yeah, it's a salt. Yeah, it's probably seven. Yeah, six and a half, seven. It's okay. It's good. The, the, they chose up the free bird ending. I give that a nine because it's like, all right, if you're going out on free bird for a 70s ish feeling damn classic feeling horror movie, I actually give that a nine. Like they ended on free bird and then all the devil's rejects get murdered. I actually do love that. Like that was the part of the damn film that I was like, Fuck yeah, you guys go out to that song, you know you're gonna die, and shit's going down. Let's There's fucking go it. There's horror films that I can give a 10, and and that's uh, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Devil's Rejects. That's it. Fair enough. Really? All right. Fair Man, enough. The rest of them, I mean, um, yeah, oh. I could say Friday the 13th, I, I, I could give them... I give them like maybe a six, seven. You definitely give them fucking them a cannibal holocaust a nine for fucking terror and crap. Fucking like you give them like honestly like I've seen a lot of horror movies and I don't know my damn tens. Like honestly, now 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 coming from like like real bad horror. And stuff like that. I even told you this. I, I, I this give time. them a fucking ten too. Now, nah, man, like bad horror movies are fucking epic. Like but the damn thing of this is what's horrible about this was. I told you not to watch. I know you, you know, told me not to you watch know, that. That's a damn good horror film. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe, but at the same time, you told me the other one. And actually, I didn't oh, commit to that I, one I either. Give one that, I give that zero. Yeah, hundred percent. Fair enough. But yeah, like horror movies are horror movies, and the way horror should work you is can, it you makes you think. Kill a damn horror movie. I mean, yeah, I mean, you could make it make the most worst horror movie in the world and stuff like that. They don't make it a good one. Exactly. Don't disagree. Yeah, you're hundred percent right there. I mean, we could, you can discuss somebody. We're not. Tr- you're not trying to discuss somebody. You're trying to make a. You're trying to in- entertain somebody or tell a story. I'd yeah, like to. I'd like to tell a good God, story. You know, like, I, like I said, yeah, anybody could drop a fucking nuclear bomb 
Yeah, yeah definitely you know, fucking. in the whole fucking uh, movie. Yeah, you definitely what end it. You could definitely end Return Living Dead style, drop a nuke on Kentucky, and then there you go. Boom. The end. But, ah, oh, man. Now, to tell a story. story. Now, now, since we're on the horror podcast and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to uh, uh, zombie movies and stuff like that. Here we go. Uh, uh, you, you can't beat the first one. Yeah. Now, which is the first one for you? What? What the fuck? Where you been? All right. So, Gene, Maddie's in the background. Maddie, be quiet. Come here, and we'll uh, we'll reintroduce you. No, you gotta come here and then be reintroduced, please. Okay. Okay. Well, the first zombie movie uh, was the best one. Was not a living dead. Everybody Fair that enough. I've heard and stuff like that. Not wrong. Uh, and that was scary when when I was growing up. That was scary. The and idea it's is still a good movie, and and I can still quote things from that damn movie. You're not wrong. Yeah, that is the the thought of it, and the way it was portrayed. Yeah, definitely look, scary look, shit. Look, that is look, scary. Here he comes. He's coming to get you, Bob. <laughs> it was just some rando fucking psycho <laughs> fucking thing, and but it then was, and it was a real zombie. Yeah, and like he didn't know that, but there was a real zombie. Yeah. A dick, and that was absolutely fucking realistic. Too loud. I'm sorry. Welcome back to the podcast, Maddie. Okay, fine. But that was her brother being a dick, and as a person with brothers, I can less, say... Too loud. Keep okay. talking. Yeah, you're good, they're, but a little brothers less. Brothers are going to be fucking dicks, and they're going to come get you, and they're going to fucking tease you, and that was absolutely the best fucking zombie movie. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Don't give a fuck awesome. what anybody it's says. The, it's the best one. And the, deal, and the thing of it is, it was black and white, and it's still irrelevant today. And the damn thing of it is. Still um, relevant. That's a great, that's a great fucking movie that, um, if it's black and white, and, the- uh, and you could still watch that day, and even people could watch it today that's, um, uh, way like in our 20s um, mm-hmm. today and still watch that and be like hey that's that's, that's a scary movie not wrong well, that is a fucking amazing movie that is a life affirming movie that is a fucking world changing movie that is a movie that absolutely my kids were like I don't want to watch some black and white movie but but then they watched that movie and they were like holy shit Shit. That's a great damn movie. This, That's a great movie. Which often happens when my kids watch black and white movies. For whatever reason, they have this idea. Black and white means it means... It's damn old, old and nothing relevant. And irrelevant. But... but you know, then they, then they watch though. something like Night of the Living Dead. Or they watch this, Bride of Frankenstein. Or they watch mm-hmm. <laughs> them... And or they fucking, get fucking Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, or they watch Creature from the Black Lagoon and they get fucking affected by it because the the films are so good. And that's well, the important I, thing. I, the I was, films I was are so good. earlier that Vincent Price is one of my favorite ones. But, I mean, mm-hmm. most, most of his that I've got so, uh, is colored. Mm. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Uh, but damn, Vincent yes. Price. That yes. is that that's that's old movies. Yeah, Vincent Price, I love my his, Mr. His, Price. Um, Vincent's got some good films. He's good done films some are, great stuff. But he also has some good stuff in color. But he's also damn just got that voice and that persona. Like it doesn't matter what you're watching with him. What, he has got the best voice in the freaking world. I love <laughs> his voice. And I his face. One of the most favorite face. ones, and I can even quote this shit, and this ain't no doubt. 
is uh, 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 the the last man on earth, right? Mm. Yep. He goes, I had to go get some garlic. How do you know like that voice? And he's just talking to himself, really. That's the yeah, weird thing, because like, he's the like only man. guy there. It's like, I need some more garlic. I've got to go get some garlic. It's like, oh my god, his struggle with that film where he's just the last man. He knows he's fight. He's actually fighting vampires, and he knows it. But, damn, yeah, that film is like Last Man on Earth. All y'all listening on the the damn internet worlds is a fucking great masterpiece, and we love his cars. Like he, the first one he lost is awesome. The second car he's driving is a fucking beast. Ah, oh, love his station wagons. That man will run the station wagon. Oh, love With fucking lots of damn dead zombie bodies. Bunch of damn dead vampire zombie bodies. Hell yeah. I think they're just yeah zombies and vampires is what he's dealing with. Because like the vampires are the ones attacking him at night. Zombies probably in the day. Dudes is dealing with some hard shit there, man. That's some bullshit. Like, Black zombies and damn vampires? Man. Fuck. Pretty great. Yeah, that film was awesome. And he's driving a fucking cool-ass vehicle, dealing with the shit, burning the bodies, throwing them in a fucking fire pit. Remember we looked that shit up, what it was, and I forgot what the hell it was. I think it's like a damn nomad or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's a damn... It's a gorgeous station wagon. But, mm. yeah, dude, yeah, that movie, that car, his cars, yeah, awesome. But Vincent Price, man, that guy was a fucking legend. Mm. Like, he put out two cookbooks where he just were, where he uses fame to get the recipes, which is awesome as shit. He and his wife. Mary. Him and his wife, yeah, and his kid. But he would go to, like, restaurants where he loved to eat. He was a food guy. He was a foodie dude. He loved eating out. He loved cooking at home. And, like, he understood people's appreciation of cooking. So, like, he would go to a restaurant, like, be them doing a show somewhere, somewhere. I mean, Vincent Price, like, hey, give me the, the recipe for this. <laughs> Will you share this recipe with for this? But, yeah, Vincent Price would go, like, do shows. He'd mm. go to, like, New York. And then, in his spare time, he's like, alright, I'm in New York. Let's go eat here. I heard there's a great recipe for this. And he'd go there, and then he'd get the recipe, and it'd, like, either suck or it'd be, like, amazing. And if it was amazing, he would be, like, using his damn star big status. star status to say, hey, um, chef. What's in this? How do you cook this? Mm -hmm. And then he would get the recipe, which was fucking fun as shit. And this is why, like, some classic recipes in the world are in his two cookbooks. Which is also why, like, a lot of um, recipes I have. <laughs> because I was a, just a server for 20 years and could just be like, hey, chef, I like cooking. Hit me. <laughs> right? Which is really all you have to do is just go ask anybody who cooks. And people who cook love to tell. In spite of what popular culture tells you, it says you're never going to get that recipe. People who cook love to tell you their recipes. They love to share the, they like, the love nuances to of how you do it. They share cooking. Because people who cook love to cook, and we love food, and we'll be like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I'll fucking give you my recipe, as far as I know it, because I shoot from the hip. Mm, there you go. That's yeah. the problem. That's the absolute problem, is that, like, um, I don't know how the fuck I made that. I just fucking... The guy that showed kind me of, this recipe I, did that, and I just kind of followed along. And then along. I kind of gauged it by my own temper. <laughs> yeah, I followed as best I could, and I watched. Without, without actually writing anything down or measuring anything. 
Yeah, because because I don't do that shit, and, and, I, and I really and I really don't. And that chef would definitely not let you sit there with a pencil and pad, and them writing shit down. Oh yeah, go ahead, go right ahead and write. Right, fuck, I said down because you're not gonna remember that either. Because there was nothing measured. There was nothing fucking measured. Yeah. I measure with my granny's wizened eye. I don't <laughs> fucking uh, measure. Yes. yes. Not even in baking. No bakers. I don't measure that either. I kind of just it's estimate it. Eyed. It's straight eyed. You got this handful. It's a, it's you got about, this handful. It's about, you got them about that. such. It's about, about such. But you're looking at them, your hand with them pile in it, and that's it. And and usually that's for like salt or baking powder or something. But my hand, like not flour so much. Flour, I'll get a li- little bit more um, more exact, accurate. But but yeah. if you took me like teaspoons, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, uh, that's going in the palm of my hand. Mm-hmm. Not and, with me when it comes to cornbread. <laughs> I don't measure shit. There you go, yeah. You don't measure yeah. the palm of your hand for salt or baking powder? Oh, hell no. This is cornbread. But, no, actually, Gene, you do, you I'm definitely measure, you definitely measure with your hand for cornbread because, like, otherwise you're no, taking... No, I don't. I'll tell you what. I, how do you I pour sure, it in with that? This, this is the damn thing of... How do you measure your salt? If, if I... If I put too much, if, if I make too much, I just know how to measure into the uh, cast iron pan and the rest of it. And I, I was just like, oh, well. All right. Well, I mean, I'm I'm accepting that as, as canon, but I'm saying, do you, where do you put your salt or your baking powder or your baking uh Oh, I don't soda. put salt no cornbread. You don't put salt in cornbread? What? Wait, you, you just been wrong right now. Whoa! You don't put salt in cornbread, dude. What? No, no really. Nope. Oh wow. Oh oh shit. All right. Now the rest of the South has just stepped back. It's like what? You Wait, put salt in cornbread? You don't, you don't put salt in any baking. You don't I'm put gonna... salt in cornbread. Horrible. Oh wow. Why the fuck? I put salt in everything I bake, including cake and cookies. Yeah. So. Oh, shit. All right, Gene. Um, salt makes you... sugar sweeter when you have sugar. It amplifies the sweetness. Salt is absolutely necessary for everything oh, that you, you don't make. put damn sugar in cornbread. Well, oh, I don't God. add sugar to cornbread because it's already there in the, in the corn, but, but listen. Here we go. Salt is necessary to everything. I that's when people say, "What's the secret ingredient?" It's love. No, it's salt, motherfuckers. Secret mm. ingredient is, is salt. Listen, there's enough salt in uh, uh in what? Dips. No. All right, so Gina, what goes into your cornbread? Don't you don't have to give us the damn exactsies, but tell us what are the ingredients in your cornbread, dude? Because if you don't get salt, what do you put in your cornbread? I know it goes I, in a I, cast iron I, skillet. One hundred percent, I don't care. Cause thing of this, I ain't gonna live the rest of my life. But what uh, do you put in your but, cornbread, dude? But uh, I, it ain't no sacred to me. Then say it. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 um, all right. Get three rivers cornbread meal or any self rising cornbread. I'm talking to you, self rising. And, uh, and, and take you a big spoon of, uh, your best mayo. Okay. Whatever you like. Fair enough. Mix it up. And uh, and you got your bacon. You, you got your um, uh, uh, grease in your skillet. You got your cast iron pan, okay. and you. And I'm telling you what, liberally by God, just uh. Put you 
some of that damn Crisco oil on it? On the pan before you damn add the ingredient? You got grease on your skillet. Got to. Yeah, grease on the skillet. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but, but in your, uh, in your bowl, in, in your bowl, just, uh, You don't use your hot grease from your skillet? No, no, I, oh. I don't. My granny did, but, uh, Oh, I fucking do. He's edgy. All right, here we go. You're not doing it like your granny. Okay, okay, we're not gonna do it like granny. All right, let's let him finish, please. I'm gonna get defensive. But he's doing his own thing, and apparently mm. it works. All right, so you got yeah, them. I, I did my own thing. All right, All right. so you got well, a bowl of them ingredients. Granny's turning you, over. You got a bowl of ingredients, and you put him a bit of crisco on top of it. How the hell does that work? You don't use eggs. You like a, you like a crumbly. No, just so uh, I don't do eggs. No, God. Okay. It makes it too hard. Don't do it. All right, fair enough. Fair... I'm just going to go with him on this. Fair mm-hmm. enough. All right, Jane. So continue your recipe. So you got them. Um, what do you All put? Right. Well, you got your pan. You got your pan. You got a hot you pan. Got, you, put, you put uh Crisco in it. And I'm talking about down. Um, put her in there royally. All right, you cover your pan with them, a uh, damn layer of grease and oil and whatever Crisco. But all right, so what you is in the bre- what's in the pan? Vegetable grease, and you heat that vegetable grease in your pan, though, right? You, you got a hot pan? Is a hot pan? Is that in no, your skillet? No, I do. I, I, I do. I, no, it's cold. You, oh God! You coat the damn Jesus, pan cold. Mary and Joseph. You, you lay it. I coat, I coat it cold. All you right. are fucking killing me right now. All right. All right. Fair enough. All right. Fair enough. All right. So then... Uh, I'm what? coming, Elizabeth. Jeez. Hey, all right. So then what's in the base? Damn pour. Uh, it's a pour, right? You pour the liquid into the pan, then you bake You're it, right? Not. You pick well, uh, You just have uh, self rising cornbread. And, no. And then you... Uh, oh. And then you... Uh, Use a, either milk, water, or a buttermilk. One of the three. Which do and you just use? Make a mix in it and stuff like that, and you just pour it in there. What's your choice, Dem? What's your choice base? What do you go with? What do you use? Eh, that's some bullshit. But what do you use? Because this uh, sounds bad. Uh, well. My my main base would be uh, milk and water. Okay. And what is the cornbread damn mix? It's a mix. Do you buy it's you you mix. buy a store bought damn mix? Oh my god! You're doing a score. You're doing a store bought mix, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Self rising cornbread. Oh. Which brand? Three rivers. Okay, all right, fair enough. And it might be fun. It might be. It might be delicious. I'm just saying. Mm. And where's this mayo coming? You, you, you heard added me mayo. In my ovaries, man. You heard my ovaries. Man. You add mayo into the damn cornbread bakes, then you pour into them whatever. I gotta smoke. Now you just pour it in there. Make sure you don't uh, uh, go over. We're, we're, uh, pour over, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, when you're baking it and stuff, so it won't. Uh, you don't want it to be too wet. I got you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, can I know? <laughs> got nothing. I, this is I am allergic to aluminum. I can't use self rising anything. Mm-hmm. I, it'll, I'll, I'll break out in hives. Yeah. And I mean, I will fucking break out in hives over three quarters of my body if I use any anything with aluminum in it. So anything self-rising, which has baking powder with aluminum in it, which most baking powder does, um, you have to be real careful about what baking powder doesn't. If I get my hands in baking powder that has uh, aluminum in it, I'll be an itchy, itchy bitch with welts all over her body. So, I can't use that. 
And that's a disclaimer, Jane. I I can't use self-rising anything. I will fucking break out in hives. Um, so, there's that. Um, also, I've tried the mayonnaise instead of eggs and oil, and I, I didn't feel it worked for me, but I like it. I like it more crumbly. But at the same time, you're saying you don't use eggs. So that's weird. Oh, yeah, so, that, so that's weird. That makes a more crumbly uh, cornbread and less cakey. As anybody who bakes knows. Anybody who bakes knows the difference between eggs and not eggs. Everybody who knows if you're using baking or, or buttermilk knows you need to use a little baking soda on top of your baking powder. That's just little little baking things people know. But what? my my cornbread, it's crumbly. There's no sugar. Oh no! You can add sugar if you want. If that's your thing, you know what? Do you, boo boo? I I don't really care. Uh, I don't like it that way, but I realize that. It can be good that way too, uh, if if you are just like hankering for a diabetes. Um, go ahead, add some sugar. But no, no my sugar. cornbread is my my cornbread is the farm cookbook, which is if y'all are children of hippies or interested in that, there is a book called the Farm Cookbook. The Farm Cookbook, published by who, what? Uh, I'm going to find out. So up With an in the introduction by Stephen. Here we go. The book publishing company, printed on the farm, Summertown, Tennessee. This is a book from the 1970s. Or a little bit earlier, but I think it was from the 1970s. There's no publishing date. Let me see this shit. This right. shit is like some fucking... Vegan commune shit from the seventies. I add eggs it's cold. to their to their cornbread recipe. I omit sugar from their cornbread recipe from Jamie's cornbread. I think it's called Jamie's, right? I don't know. The oh. book. The book is it's definitely the, it's the called. Common, it's the common page, though. You can look right. at what yeah, I'm looking right. at. But I'm looking, I've got the book in hand. I had eggs. I may share a picture, but it's called The Farm Vegetarian Cookbook with an mm -hmm. instruction by Stephen. By Stephen. Where the fuck Stephen and, is? And this has such great language in it. It's all written by these, like, from this hippie commune in the 60s in East Tennessee. Summertown, Tennessee. Okay. Uh, Wherever. Eight, three, eight, four, eight, three. It was published in 1975. Yeah. The book publishing. It, it's it, it's fucking fantastic. Oh. And, but their cornbread, if you add eggs and omit sugar, <laughs> okay. it's a great cornbread recipe. What's I, it it's gonna it's gonna come up naturally because that's the recipe. Yeah, there you go. Oh. See what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Check this that's out. the recipe I, I use. Jamie's homemade cornbread. cornbread. Oh, there's Jamie's black eyed peas. No, it's there's like black eyed peas. But, but the, what was their Jamie's their, their thing was like? Cornbread. We want people to know that vegetarian food can be a real turn on and groovy. And uh, they, they use this kind of language, and it's, it's really fun. And they were absolutely heartfelt in it. And the farm was actually like a big commune deal in East Tennessee. I'm just telling you, I won the uh, well, cornbread cook-off. I get, I get that you won the cornbread cook-off, but I'm not sure I would love your cornbread, Jane. Yeah. I'm just saying straight out, you put sugar in that shit, you take the eggs out, no. All right, so like this recipe, Janie's uh, home cooked cornbread calls for two cups cornmeal, two cups flour, mm -hmm. white makes lighter bread, 
Five teaspoons baking powder. A lot of baking Two powder. Two teaspoons salt. I use damp salt, so with dry salt, you may want to use a one and a half teaspoon. So she means she's using sea salt. Yep. Uh, two tablespoons sugar. Two and a third, three fourth cups water or milk. There you go. If you want and in that milk case, or water. I use buttermilk, and, and I buttermilk and then I add milk. a quarter teaspoon of baking soda because you have to when you use buttermilk. But she doesn't. And yeah. then you add I, one I, third I add cup this. oil. This allows for greasing skillet and one third, one quarter cup or so in mixing. Right. So when I do the oil, and they will say this further on in the instructions here, uh, oil your skillet and put it in the oven to get heated up real hot when you're using a cast iron skillet. Right. Just put your oil in there. Hmm. Any yep. of the oil you're going to use, whatever oil it is, if that's grease or what, you put that in your skillet and you get it hot. Yeah. So when you get all your dry ingredients together and then you put the wet ingredients on them in, in the well, you're going to turn that oil back in there and it's going to sizzle. But also mm -hmm. you're going to have a sizzling hot skillet so you have a really good crust on your cornbread. Oh, yeah. That's the important, that's the important thing. Am I right, Jane? Am I right about the the sizzling hot crust? I like it. I like it the way I did, eh? Yep, you're not wrong. Did either. you not put a fucking sizzling hot crust on that shit? Yeah, mm -hmm. I just uh, go to uh, 450 degrees and cook it for about an hour. Well, you didn't put the hot grease in there, though. No, I don't. Uh, well, then I don't understand how I you mean, won my this. My granny did, but... Uh, yeah, my they, granny did. They also bake an hour, too. So, Jane's not wrong. Definitely bake an hour. Bake an hour? That's how long it takes to make cornbread. But also, you're, like, for you and, like, not maybe Jane, according to this recipe, they damn coat that damn pan with the hot shit, mm -hmm. heat it up, and then coat, make sure the coat's on, and then pour the shit in there. Then they throw it back in there and bake it for an hour. Yeah, bake it for an hour. That's how you do it. That's not wrong. Yeah, Jim, am I right? I, that's one way to do it. That's just way out. That's, yeah, there you go. But you got, you put hot grease in your pan at least, a cast iron pan. Am I right? No, I don't. I, I, I don't. I, I Jesus just, Christ. Uh, uh, now, well, the, this is what my granny did. She she would uh, put it in there and, and make the. Uh, well, she put it on the eye and uh, get it hot. Then she put butter in it, and uh, and she would put what I put in it. Uh, I I put Crisco. No, uh, that's fair. I I will give you that. Like Crisco is damn a lard. Crisco is good for certain things. I'm calling this cornbread talk at three ten. But she would put uh, butter. She'd break off some butter and stuff like that and get the mm. pan hot and stuff mm -hmm. like that and then make her mix and then pour it in there and then put it in the oven. Oh, so she did heat her pan. She heated her oh, pan yeah, up. she did, but I did. Uh, I oh, all gee. right, there's oh, a difference gee, there. Oh, honey, gee. and also I think my granny would fight your granny. There'd be a throwdown here. I think my granny would fight your granny about this. Oh, these are words thrown. Yeah. They, no, uh, no I'm, I'm sure that at, at the end of the day, they would, they would go like fucking meet at church and, and go agree. But I think my granny would fight your granny about cornbread. Jane. I'll put a bun in cold. Weird. That is, what did he say? He said that he put his damn cornbread in cold. Cold pan. Oh, what the fuck? How the fuck you get a crust in your cornbread like that? <sighs> Ain't right. Ain't right. Doesn't seem like it works. Sorry. No, it, it can't work. Doesn't it's seem not good. science, You're dude. baking for an hour, so yes, it could, but... So some northerner said your cornbread was good. I am fucking disagreeing. I'm walking away for a second because I cannot... What? 
<laughs> Mike, am I wrong? You're not entirely not wrong, but I have to see. I'm having an emotional we will reaction. Have to, I'm going to walk away a second. We will have to see this, Gene. Oh, it's I a cornbread cook-off okay. between you Where and Maddie. My cornbread. Like, you've got your recipe. I got my recipe. And it's we've got an oven. And we will cook this shit. So, we got a cornbread cook-off between you and Maddie. Because your recipe sounds crazy as fuck. And even compared to them, the hippie book, the, the farm oh. vegetarian fucking cookbook there... Your recipe still sounds batshit crazy. But apparently it works and you figured out how to do it. I'm not going to disagree. Like, I haven't tried it, but like, it's apparently been okayed by the fucking damn, like, fucking, your girl, your girl. Your girl said it's amazing. Like, her family said. It wasn't this girl. It was the fucking, the the fucking, uh. I've already Blue won metal at the fair. Let me check this out. I've already won this cornbread cooked up. Yeah. Not yeah. against my wife. Yeah, Not yeah. It, but... yeah, you've won a cornbread cook off, but you haven't won hey, against but, my. The thing of it, the thing of it is, love you. Did, you ain't gonna win that. Did, so okay. we took your cornbread and stuff like that. And whoever's cornbread was and stuff like that. Oh, uh, oh, uh, we put a name to it and said no. So it would be biased. And uh, I want. I don't know, Gene. I'm just saying, like, somebody saying their cornbread's better than somebody else, and you doing some crazy shit that's kind of horrifying to a lot of fucking Southern women and a lot of Southern people. And the way you just described your cornbread the cookie way you is a fucking. Not putting ass. in a hot skill with hot grease. It sounds horror it's show. Actually, what fucking. Terrified. Yeah, it wasn't the mayonnaise. I, the mayonnaise, I, I was like, cool, man. I don't want mayonnaise. It's made out of. No. No. That's how you add the egg, but. Don't Gee, I, I added the mayonnaise and I didn't diss it. But. But. What you're saying like, right now, you're saying so I'm not putting a fucking cornbread in a hot skillet? Mm. I, I will. I will I'm, fucking I'm die monster, on this hill and watch me die. Cold shit. All right, no, Dean, that's no, you, that's you, that's no, you. that's just not how you make All anything. All right, so we got, we got two opinions here. We're going to have to have a fucking cornbread no. battle. This shit's happening. Heads up. No, you can't make anything oh, with a crust. Oh, my God, this is, this is the horror podcast. My phone? God, and this is going to be the my horror phone, Mike? Uh, uh, cornbread cook off. Fuck yeah, this is definitely gonna and fucking happen. My God, I'm gonna win. All right, uh, I Gene, just you don't even ass, know. You will not fucking win, motherfucker. I don't even know how that's gonna work for you, but if it does work, I'm gonna be amazed. Cornbread cook off. Yes. My, where's my phone? Don't know. I'm just kind of horrified by the fact that he's using cold skillet. Boom. I'm good. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm You I'm kidding me right now? I, I will. I'm confident about it. No, I'm losing he, my fucking mind all right. about it. I got nothing for that. All right, people. This is it. All right. You've heard the opening. This is the gauntlet thrown for the cornbread cook-off challenge between Gino and Maddie. Gino's running a cold skillet. Maddie's running a hot skillet. Will either work? Who the fuck? Who the Hell, I don't know. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But we will provide the oven, the ingredients, and the... I got two ovens. The no, possibilities. Right here. Right here. But the fact is, your cooking style will be facing Maddie's cooking style. And we will have a separate bunch of people to judge the cornbreads in the future. And the cornbread cook-off between Gino and Maddie's cook-off styles will commence in the future. Because, holy fuck, cold this damn skillet versus hot this, skillet. This, this, is, this is on, son. It's 100% on. Yeah, there ain't no way this ain't on. All right, Gino, we got to wrap this up. Because it's after midnight, and this has been the podcast. Holy shit. Holy shit, I didn't expect it to end on cornbread, but there we are. 
But this is the end of the podcast. Did we even talk about horror movies at all? We did a little bit. Krampus. Okay, Krampus horror. exists. The end. Horror right. is important. Horror is important. But thank you all for listening. This has been the damn episode 81 that I promised. And um, I don't know. We'll be on faith. We'll be on YouTube. It was really damn good. Damn thing of this. I'm going to win. Gene's going to fucking bring the damn gauntlet. And he's going to slap shit around, but does he win with his cold damn skillet? I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to offer the option. Honey, as much as I hate competitions, I I sound like one of those competition bitches right now, right? Like, I know how good my fucking cornbread is. (laughs) You better pick your best recipe because Gene's apparently confident as shit in his damn recipe. I'm I'm already, I've already. Uh, my cornbread has a crust, so I've already beaten you. Because I put it in a fucking hot skillet. All right, like, so with, you know, Sharon's got to come over and help judge this. So Sharon definitely has to come over and have some cornbread with us. I so don't that's like gonna be great. sweet cornbread, but that's... Wow, you're, 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 you're done. Oh my god. I'm, All right. I'm what? It's been... You're done. I'm done? Damn right. Alright, no, alright. No, right. I, I don't think so. That's. I, 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 I think you're about to find out. Alright. Gauntlets have been thrown, people. No, That's I our like episode for this damn 81th episode. Welcome to winter. Welcome to longer night days. Thank God. We're getting extra Happy minutes. Happy solstice, so. motherfucker. Solstice. We're getting extra minutes a day, so fuck yeah. Hell yeah. We made it through the darkest times. Happy fucking solstice. Our days are getting brighter every day from here on out. Fuck yeah. Alright, what's that word down on that one? We're done on that one, but Gene, you damn definitely better bring your damn cornbread recipe to the oh, fucking God end. dang, I'm telling you what, Maddie, you are you are you're going damn. Oh you know, eat my dick. Bap, bap, bap. Eat my dick. Also, people, uh to get back to the beginning of the episode. I am the cornbread master. Fair enough. All right, Maggie's bringing this back to the beginning. What's up? Shaloli. Shaloli. means squirrel in Cherokee. Shaloli. That's fun. Yeah, squirrel. Yeah, fair enough. I got you, Shaloli. Right. You got my shaloli right there? Got the squirrel right there. (laughs) Fair enough. Right, you better run. Eat my shaloli as a fucking damn... You don't play with me when it comes to cornbread. All right, we I got don't this. I play with cornbread, motherfucker. I don't fucking I'm, play. I'm, I'm, I, I am. I make, like, such a beautiful fucking cornbread. I don't play with cornbread. I, I bake play. cornbread. Just mean. All right. All right, people. That's it. That's it. We no, get wrapping this up. No. I'm going to find another word to say it in <laughs> But let's wrap this shit up. This is our podcast. My podcast. Like, I'm the one to run this shit, hoping that it goes on, but fucking hell. Fucking, uh, we got a cornbread competition come up in the future oh, here. Apparently, apparently we do. Oh, my God. Because Jean's got do, style, do. Maddie's got style, and cornbread you know is cornbread. You think, you think yours is all that? No. All no. you Yankees. If you hadn't had real he cornbread, like you'll never had, have anything as good as like either of these two. He sounds like he's making Yankee cornbread and putting sugar in it. He's oh, like, you're done. Oh, he's not like you putting you putting sugar in that? You putting sugar in that motherfucker? Like who are you? Oh, you stupid! All right, you're not putting we'll sugar leave, in it. We'll leave that. But back. you know what? You're also not putting grease in it. You're putting fucking Crisco in it. You said, and I'm gonna puke in my mouth a little bit. Now, now you're stealing my damn my recipe. He I'm not gonna use your fucking mayonnaise recipe because I tried it and I didn't like it. Oh, okay. All right, Gene. All right. Here we go. That's it. All right. That's it. That's it. Calling it. The fucking... Love the you, the gauntlets have been thrown. And this is the end of our Love episode. You, but, but there's... Yeah, that's cool. A kind of a, a cool thing to the competition. But I'm wrapping this up because I need this day and be able to download this to one podcast. So, y'all. Thank y'all for listening. This has been the Chainsaw Bar. It's a Southern podcast. Get dealt with. Sometimes we talk about cornbread. Sometimes we talk about cooking southern shit. And <laughs> you'd be lucky enough to eat some of this shit. Because it's you'd delicious. Be lucky enough to eat my cornbread, you motherfucker. But, because Maddie's is going to be 
<laughs> no, my, and jeans my, might my be pretty delicious is, too. It's pretty fucking. But <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's the horror podcast that this one because they're kind of Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I will fucking head to head my cornbread with your cornbread. I do you up, my God. You make it with self rising flour. Suck my nuts, man. All right, so <laughs> that's been our podcast. This has been horrible as shit. So, um, Chainsaw Bar Salute here on three. You ready, Gino? It's been a fucking hot minute since you saluted. Gotcha. Maddie, you ready? It's been a hot minute yeah, since buddy. either of us have. Yeah. All right. But we thank y'all for listening. Social distance because people spit. spit. And one, two, uh, three. Vroom. And also, social distance. My kid's been sick for a month. Oof. 100%. We thank y'all. fun with that fucking shit. That's been a blast. All right, Gino, I'm stopping the recording. Thank you for being here. Let's get some sleep because we got work tomorrow. <laughs>